In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Audio Swift in slider mode. The slider mode is a new controller that divides the trackpad into one to four lanes, where each lane becomes a virtual slider that sends either control change or pitch bend MIDI messages. Only three sliders can be used at the same time. Up to 12 sliders can be configured on the console window and they are grouped together in different banks. Before we start, let me tell you about a new way of turning on the Audio Swift console temporarily. Turn on the console with a four or five finger tap, and quickly after that, press the shift key. The console window will stay on until you release the shift key. This could be useful for people that want to use Audio Suite for just a short moment, without the need to reach out for the escape key. Now let's go back with the slider mode. When Audio Swift is launched, it creates three virtual MIDI ports. Audio Swift 1 and 2 are used for the mixer mode, and Audio Swift 3 are for the trigger, scale, XY, and the new slider mode. In DAWs like Logic Pro, the MIDI ports will be automatically enabled and ready to use. However, some other DAWs require that you manually enable the MIDI ports of your controller in their preferences or configuration windows before you start using them. Please read their manuals on how to do this. I'm using Logic Pro as an example, but the steps to assign a controller to a certain parameter are similar with other DAWs that use MIDI learn functions. Sometimes your virtual instrument or synthesizer automatically recognizes the control chain number that you want to set up. Like CC1 is modulation, CC7 is volume, and CC11 is expression. But if you need to set it up manually, let's follow these steps. First, decide which parameter you want to control inside a plugin. Then, choose the controller that will be assigned to that parameter. Enable the MIDI learn function in your DAW. Turn on the Audio Swift console and start moving the controller. When the value of the parameter starts changing, turn off the Audio Swift console and disable the MIDI learn function. The controller will be assigned. Repeat these steps for the next controller. Let's open the Audio Swift console window and click the start to make it stay always on screen. Change to slider mode by clicking the controller mode menu or by pressing the number 5 in your keyboard. Let's also open the trackpad window. The console shows the settings of each individual slider. Right now we can use four sliders in our trackpad. The number of sliders can be changed at the bottom left corner where it says lanes. If we want to use the next group of sliders, just click over the banks menu. If the audio shift console is on or is the key window on screen, use the period and comma keys on your keyboard as shortcuts to change the banks. At the bottom right of the console, change the MIDI channel for the controller. Use the left and right arrows in your keyboard as shortcuts. The numbers set here will be the same for the trigger, scale, and XY modes. I selected the track where my plugin is and open it. In this synth, I want to control the oscillator 1 volume, so I'll move it with the mouse pointer. This is the first step. The second step is to decide which slider in my trackpad is going to be assigned to oscillator 1. I choose the first one in my console window, which has CC number 1. The third step is to enable the middle learn function in my DAW. In Logic Pro, the keyboard shortcut for this is Command L. It opens the Control Assignments window. The window comes in two views, Easy and Expert. I have chosen the Easy view. Logic Pro is now waiting for the MIDI message. With a four or five finger tap, I turn on the console and start only moving one finger in one direction over the first slider in my trackpad. On screen, I'll see the parameter moving. When I finish, I turn off the console by using the escape key, and then disable the middle learn function by closing its window. The controller is assigned to the parameter. Now let's look at the settings for the sliders. At the top, there are the labels. Type a name to change it. Click here to choose between Control Change or Pitch Pen. Let's select Pitch Pen first. Turn on the console with a four or five finger tap over the trackpad, play the note with your keyboard and start moving a finger. If you have a trackpad before touch, apply pressure and it will send after touch mini messages. After you finish, hit the escape key to turn off the console. Let's select Control Change again. At the right, click and drag 
or type a control number from 0 to 127. By default, each slider is set to CC1 for control change number 1. Below, set the default value for this controller. Let's type 64. Click the triangle if you want the slider to return to its default value when you release the finger. The next menu sets the format of the slider, or in other words, it sets the way it sends the MIDI messages. I'll explain these formats later and I will see the difference between them. For the moment, I'm going to leave it in regular format. I turn on the console with a four or five fingers tap and move the slider. The parameter on screen start moving. Notice that you don't need to worry if you get away from the lane of the slider. It will still control the same parameter. If I release the finger, the parameter returns automatically to the default value as I said before, because I enabled this feature by clicking the triangle at the console window. Another way to set the slider to its default value is by pressing the option key and then tap the slider. The default value features are only available with the regular and absolute formats. If the slider is on the regular format, the sensitivity of the slider can be changed by going into preferences, slider tap, and move this slider horizontally. Also, the slider will move more slowly by moving your finger while pressing the command key. As I said before, each slider has four formats on how it sends the MIDI data. Regular, Absolute, Relative A, and Relative B. It's important that your DAW is set up in such a way that it recognizes these formats, or the slider will not work properly. When you map the controller in your DAW, it sometimes sets the format automatically for you, but other times it doesn't, and you'll need to set it up manually. The regular and absolute formats in AudioSwift work in similar ways. The difference is that in regular, AudioSwift remembers the last MIDI value that was sent by the slider, and for there, it moves up or down. So you can start moving your finger from any point of the slider, and it will pick up the last value from there. However, if you move the parameter with your mouse pointer instead, and then start using AudioSwift again, the parameter will jump to the last value sent by the slider instead of the one that was set on screen. With the absolute format, the first value sent will depend on where you put your finger on your trackpad. The parameter will jump to that value and start moving from there. When using either regular or absolute formats, the format of the controller that was assigned should be set to absolute inside your DAW. When I mapped this slider, Logic automatically set it up to unsigned, which is another name for absolute. You can see this under the Logic Controller Assignments window in Expert View. AudioSwift also uses two types of standard relative MIDI formats, relative A or signed bit, and relative B or two complement. Both increase the parameter value if the finger moves up and decreases the value if it's moved down. The difference is how it sends the MIDI data. With relative A or sign a bit, the controller sends values from 1 to 8 as an increase, depending on how fast you move the finger, and values from 65 to 72 as a decrease. With relative B or choose complement, values from 1 to 8 are an increase, and values from 127 to 120 are a decrease. At your DAW, the controller assignment should be on signed bit or signed magnitude when using relative A format, and two's complement when using relative B. Here in Ableton Live, you can check this at the bottom of the window when you map the controller. Again, your DAW could set it up manually for you, but sometimes it doesn't, so please check out their manual on how to do this. That's all for this tutorial. Please watch the rest of videos on how to use AudioSafe with other controller modes. Thanks for watching.